Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Thursday, June 10th. Today we'll have one more day of significant winds across most of Utah. The strongest winds will be across eastern Utah with gusts over 45 or 50 miles per hour. But we already have wind gusts along the Utah-Nevada border into western Utah that are gusting in the 30s to low 40s at this time. So again, the most significant winds across Utah with gusts between 35 and 45 or up to 50 miles per hour with relative humidity in the single digits to low teens. We have plenty of ongoing fire activity across Utah, so those will be a concern for all our Utah fires today. A cold front is moving across the north, so we will see cooler temperatures today across all of the Great Basin, however still dry conditions across Nevada and Utah. We did have a significant area of rainfall that moved through northern Nevada last night into this morning and into western Idaho. We will continue with these showers across Idaho, and we'll see additional showers develop further east. This will lower fire behavior in the north. On Friday, we'll see drier and warmer conditions region-wide, with still some breezy winds, especially along the Sierra front tomorrow. On Saturday, no significant impacts, but a gradual warming and drying trend through the weekend, with above-normal temperatures returning. Over the last 24 hours, again, we've seen that swath of precipitation over western Idaho into northern Nevada. Many areas in this area in green saw precipitation amounts up to a quarter, a third, or even up to a half inch of rainfall that fell over a long period of time. There was very little lightning with just a few strikes within this area of rain. We do have plenty of fire activity across the Great Basin, several large fires across Utah. However, in the last 24 hours, we did have one new fire over eastern Utah that is now a large fire, and then again, a few smaller fires scattered across Utah and Nevada. But again, several large fires across Utah. Over the last seven days, very little precipitation, just spotty with thunderstorms. This does not encompass what we saw last night into this morning in the north well below normal precipitation over the last two weeks across the Great Basin. Fuel conditions continue to dry out over across Utah. We have most of the state now above the 80th to 90th percentile and in the south above the 97th percentile. We did issue a fuels and fire behavior advisory yesterday, which is in effect for the next two weeks over southern and eastern Nevada and encompassing nearly all of Utah and the Arizona Strip. We are seeing obviously critically low fuel moistures for the time of year, conditions we would normally be seeing later in July or even August. So very critical conditions across the area shaded in red, especially in our sagebrush and our larger timber fuels. We also have plenty of reports of pinion juniper die-off, which will again add to the severity of the situation across the area shaded in red. Fuels will Fuel moisture will increase over northern Nevada and Idaho where we saw recent rainfall, but elsewhere will continue to dry out through this weekend. ERC charts show some of the areas that we have our ongoing large incidents. Up across the northern Wasatch, ERCs have increased significantly and are near records for the time of year. Similar conditions over eastern Utah, and our, these areas are also approaching and exceeding the 97th percentile, and then at records over the rest of southern Utah at the 97th percentile. Our satellite image from this morning shows that area of low pressure that's been along the west coast, generating wind for multiple days, is now moving eastward across Idaho. So again, that will push that wind threat to, to the east and continue showers in the north. So today, again, much cooler temperatures across all of the Great Basin, but still dry and windy across Utah and the Arizona Strip. So we have plenty of high risk to indicate that. You can see where the strongest winds will be today, showing the strongest winds over eastern Utah, especially along the Colorado border, which is where those wind gusts will exceed 45 or 50 miles per hour. Further west, we'll continue to see those gusty winds over the rest of Utah and even into northeast Nevada and northwest Utah. Also some stronger winds across Idaho, but much higher humidity for today and also some shower activity. But again, something to watch in some of our drier spots as those winds continue across Idaho. On Friday, that trough moves off to the east with another area of low pressure along the west coast. So we will see those breezy winds again along the Sierra front mainly with continued dry conditions across the southern and eastern half of the Great Basin. Temperatures will also be warming starting on Friday. So again, the winds on Friday, just breezy, gusts around 30 miles per hour or low 30s along the Sierra front, and then breezy in central Idaho. But again, in the north, much higher humidity. Across Nevada and Utah, relative humidity dips back down into the low to mid single digits. No high risk for Saturday. Again, just warmer and drier, but lighter winds overall. And so you can see the wind picture on Saturday. Again, breezy winds over southern and eastern areas, but certainly nothing like what we've been seeing recently with most of the gusts in the 20s. But we will continue to see single digit relative humidity through the weekend and poor humidity recoveries overnight. And again, this will affect all of our large incidents and anything new and emerging over the next couple of days. 
Forecast amounts of precipitation are shown here, that precipitation heaviest over western Idaho, also into northern Nevada, but that was what we saw last night. So moving into the next 24 to 36 hours, just showers in the north with dry conditions further south. As we go into later in the weekend and next week, we continue with this trough along the west coast. So we will continue to see typical breezes along western areas of the Great Basin, so no high risk, but just breezy and drier. And then as we move into early next week, the ridge really starts to dominate the eastern half of the Great Basin with that trough in the west. So breezy winds or typical zephyr winds continue along the Sierra front, but certainly climbing temperatures going into next week. And on Tuesday as well, that ridge really starts to take shape across the Four Corners area. So we will see again another period of very hot temperatures and certainly across Utah and southern areas of the Great Basin, these records, these temperatures could be near records once again going into the early to mid portion of next week. Right now, no lightning activity is expected through the early portion of the week, but once we get towards the middle of the week and this ridge starts to pull some moisture from the south, we could see some areas of thunderstorms developing. Right now, it's not looking like these thunderstorms will bring significant precipitation, very spotty, so that will be a significant concern going into next week. We don't have any high risk at this time, but we will be watching the hot temperatures and any return of lightning going towards the middle of next week with certainly some high risk areas um, probable at times over parts of Utah, possibly even the Sierra front. But again, we'll be watching as that develops. No changes in the precipitation once we get through this system today and tonight. We will see dry conditions across all areas of the Great Basin. And the 8 to 14 day outlook taking us into the third week in June shows hot temperatures well above normal across the western U.S. and drier conditions, especially over the northern two-thirds of the region. We will start to see that monsoon moisture start to take shape in the southwest, so that may be promising eventually for southern areas of the Great Basin. But right now it's looking like through the third week in June, any thunderstorms we get that develops across the Great Basin will just bring light and spotty precipitation and more likely an increase in fire potential before we see any significant moisture. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.